Radiant team pick. Hello everybody and welcome back. It is game number three now of our first series today for BTS Europe. It's pick. Cookies going against Team Spirit here. Don't be fooled by the overlay here. We're going to get the new one in and change it out. This is not BTS Americas. It's Europe for sure. And uh, what a start to today. This series is turning out to be something quite special here. Cookies, a rambunctious squad, not afraid to play their style of Dota, giving Team Spirit, a team of some crafty veterans, a run for their money. I'm Coddle Guy for Beyond the Summit. I'm going to be joined once again by Mop Packs. Mop Packs, here we go. And this time, the Mighty Invoker will be first phase picked Five up again. Seconds. This time, Remaining. though, on the side of Team Spirit. So, it's starting to feel more like that Platin tier mid laner Reserve that we're going to be expecting from the rest of this meta. Yeah, certainly the uh, the S tier hero coming out so far. And uh, again, we'll see the low Druid and the Death Prophet ban. If you guys have missed the first game, we, we had some pretty insane aggression coming out from those two heroes inside of Cookies. So, uh, again, team. they will head towards the Darks here, though. I mean, Kester did play it extremely well. We talked about that. Mm -hmm. um, had some really nice vacuums, some walls, especially that one right there at the end. Maybe expecting some more follow-up lockdown coming out. Um, couldn't quite get it. Like, you had the Invoker for, like, Tornado and stuff like that, but it doesn't really hold them in place where you can actually do something to them. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, I would expect some AoE stuns maybe this time. For Cookies now, this is normally when they've been getting their Steph-style kind of hero. At least last time they favored an early pickup on their Tusk. He seems to be... He reminds me kind of already with, like, a Jerex. Like, the first game with a Bounty Hunter, Radiant now he's got a Tusk. He seems like a guy who really favors roaming around, setting up plays getting intel for the team. The one hero in that hero pool I'm missing that I've not seen yet today, and I'm pretty heartbroken about, of course, is the Radiant Earth Spirit. <laughs> I guess no no team here really <laughs> knows how to play oh, the yeah. hero too much of, and they just kind of have been ignoring it. Though, for any pub scene, at least outside of NA, uh, there is a lot of Earth Spirit play out there, so it's not something they should be unfamiliar with, but remaining. maybe just something they don't personally care to go for. And Dia I consider... Back a good replacement for the profile of something like a Tusk, and now that Tusk has been banned out, I would say that if he does play the hero, it may be something they could consider, but we'll have to see. For now, a modest uh, Darkseer and Dazzle as their second grab. Ten seconds remaining. Yeah, I actually completely agree with you with the Tusk and Five Earth Spirit comparison. It's remaining. something that we saw some teams just avoiding it, and then I saw Jarex pick it once one of his games, and of course, the, the change time. to the pool was massive. In terms oh, yeah. of how defensive the hero is, and that's the big thing that everyone hated, right? Yeah. It was that fact that he's like, oh, Radiant like, haha, ha, just kidding, you can't kill this guy. But you still have the same thing where you can roll in, you've got your kicks, your stuns, everything like that, ganking the mid lane, ganking the safe lane. He's a very mobile hero, it's extremely tusk like. You're really right. And then you, instead Dark of a, a crit back. in terms of the ultimate, you're getting this big yeah. AoE, you're dropping the stones around. So I definitely expect to see him a lot in this meta. Uh, a lot of teams, I'm sure, will start to pick it up more. Same thing with the Oracle. Mm hmm. And, uh, but I guess back to this game at hand where neither of them appear to be featured. We will have the Bane again. He'll have to play something new now, though. Yeah, they ban out that Bounty Hunter, Five so that would be the time for that That's true. Spirit. Let's do it, baby. But I'm a huge <laughs> Earth Spirit fanatic. That's the only reason I really want it. I would say Tusk is, is better now than Earth Spirit because of the pull you were mentioning. And his viability mm -hmm. as a support altogether becomes a bit questionable because now that Agnums is just core on him to even be able to do that, and we already know Agnums to be just a great item on him as it is. You might just have to put him back into being an offlane core. Just sucks because for some of these teams, like a team like Liquid who have Jerex, it's just that he's more put into playing that four position. You can't really probably have my control shift over to playing as support. So I'm curious to see what they're going to oh, be doing in the future. You know what they did? Hmm? I'll tell you what they did, actually. You would have liked this. They went for a mind control bounty hunter. So he was still the oh. core. But they tried to stack the yeah. gold up, right? So it would get higher for that four roll Earth Spirit with Jerax on that. Yeah, so you really didn't need work it. Out, actually. Ten seconds. Yeah, you, you really need <laughs> I the... think they lost. So. Yeah, it's like we <laughs> want him to play this again. hero, Five but seconds. he can't really play like just like normal, just off lane or just support. But we want to get him farm right away. And I guess the bounty He's hunter was not going to cut it. But here we go. Cookies, third pick, Gyrocopter. Something that had been ignored. I think this is the first time we're seeing him today, right? Which is. Yeah, Mind-boggling to me. I don't know why he was ignored so much. But, I mean, look at this. Dark Seer, Gyrocopter, already crazy, crazy good team fight here. If, uh, you know, Spirit are going to be on to it, Invoker could be Quas Wex. Very good at just kind of breaking up those synergetic team fights. I'm just curious to see what else they're going to be doing on top of it here. Yeah, it's interesting. Team Spirit, like, they went pretty gank-heavy. The Slider, of course, banned out here. 
Um, so won't be seeing Afterlife on that again. Disruptor. But, oh, they'll grab the Disruptor. So yeah, always pretty team. nice when you're getting on the aggressive. You know, kind of get yourself an extra kill every time you go for a tower. Yeah, they, they try to run away. It's like, oh, I don't think so. We'll be taking our uh, and one with this yeah. tower kill here. So Disruptor, the pro NBA player these days. You know what and makes it, it even better for him, though? Here too. That lens. What's that? Very good on him. Yes. The Aether lens, man. It's Especially one of those heroes. On, too. Yeah, I mean... It can make you do what we've been seeing already, where it's like maybe you go arcanes early, or you just bypass the arcanes and go straight for the lens. Use the arcanes to build the lens, but now you're talking about being able to glimpse from someone outside of their vision. Like you can't, you can glimpse people from the complete darkness. The range is just ridiculous at that point, and it just helps everything else. When you already have a hectic team fight, we're going to have a dark seer lead in probably at some point with a blink vacuum. Having that extra bit of range on something like your static storm could just ruin the day of cookies. So. I would not be surprised to see Disruptor toy with the idea of getting an Aether Lens this game. Uh, overall, though, if if he is prioritized a little bit of farm, which it looks like now it's probably going to be the Bane, you can also get that Radiant Agnum's late team. game. Very good against BKB-dependent heroes like your Gyrocopter. But Earth nice little response from Cookies, and it's going to be the third time Mod Packs Dying we're going to see the little back. Pablo yeah. Rubik. Yeah, no, loving this play so far, and I, I also love this Animage pick. I think Animage and Ursa, to me, are two of the best heroes right now against Gyrocopter. Like, you mm -hmm. blink on top before, if it's before the BKB, obviously you're going to be mana burning him fast, but even in the late game, like, remain. the second the BKB is gone, blink on him, Manta, and Gyro just gets blown up. Five seconds so, remaining. Um, same idea with the Ursa, of course, as well. You just want to annihilate this guy before any of that Helm the Dominator work can come Reserve out, the flat cannons, all that business. Uh, but it is great for the Rubik. I mean, obviously, now he's got Blink to steal. Yeah. Uh, he's going to have all the Disruptor spells are pretty great. Bane's pretty decent. So, you know, Pablo Gaming definitely has the tools to work with here. So we'll see yeah. if he can pull out a big one here in Game 3 for them. He's the, I mean, he will be the like only tool they have right now to get catch on this AM. So Cookies will need to fill their mid lane with some sort of catch as well or something. Otherwise, this AM is just going to have the time of his life. So we'll, we'll see if it's something they do I consider. I just want to say like Alina or something yeah. for them, like just for the Laguna Blade and... Uh, we'll see. They're going to ban the DK, anticipating Dying a little bit of push. Team. Decent lockdown as well. You know? Yeah, that's so. a, the blink lockdown you would also need and could offer the push. Yeah, that's a great ban, actually. But you can't go like a Razor or a Viper if you just want to try to get a, a straight-up win against the Invoker. Maybe a Queen of Pain if you hope that later you can get a Sheep Stick or some way to get catch. Uh, I don't know. But then you're an, a Queen of Pain into an AM, and you're going to be offering yourself as a big Ten sacrificial mana rain. bomb potentially even with lena that's the same case so Five this is a good okay wind ranger service. there that's we go good. that's <laughs> that's actually a great spot uh, you know as, as long I, I mean i haven't seen successful wind ranger versus invoker matchups in the mid lane recently with this new invoker but she offers that catch potential to help lock down the am but ooh, what a nice pickup at the end the nyx assassin a classic combo breaker against your dark seer team fight combo we see teams like secret Go for this in this particular instance, and it looks like Goblet been taking note. Yeah, perfect. Absolutely perfect perk coming out here, especially with all those offlaners banned out. Like, they lost the Beastmaster, they lost the Slardar. So I really like this. Very smart drafting uh, once again coming out. So a little bit of experience showing through here. And, uh, no, I'm very excited. The, the Carapace, the changes to it are so good. Like, not only, obviously, it's so good for the combo break, but when you're roaming around Invis now and Vendetta, if there's anyone trying to spam a wave, you immediately get that stun to easily set up your Vendetta stun combo. Yep. Oh, and then that, that Agnum set up for holding high ground, man. That was a pretty nice change for this hero. Yep. Yep. I was actually playing last night, hence why I probably sounded terrible this morning or sound terrible today. I was up very late, <laughs> winter, and, uh... Some of the people who came into town to help with, like, Summit and... Oh, pause. So, perfect time for mini story time, I guess. Um, who helped out for the Summit, or not. And WCA are leaving uh, today. So, we wanted to stay up. You know, play some pubs. You know, pretty, pretty late. Might have, uh, you know... Drinking some Capri Suns. Yeah, you know, drank some Capri Suns. <laughs> we won a lot of games. We lost a lot of games. You know, ran to a Brack stack. Ran to an Owie stack. At some point, and oh, that's uh, the worst. You know, I always hit the Leviathan stack. Oh yeah, that's the Leviathan stack. We actually did great. We yeah, every game so. we won except for the Owie stack at the end. But I gotta say, we gave them a run for their money. I'm happy with that. But you know, <laughs> I, it, firsthand I got to see the Nyx. The point of it being Nyx assassin on gods, and he got the Agnes, and it was ridiculous. Lashar, by the way, almost dead here. Woo! Very close. Forced out the early shackle, locks him down nicely. He's got to get the blink. He gets out, but barely. 
And uh, they will barely hold here. Oh, another shackle, man. Gim's just all about giving the love right now. And they're just making sure that they're still like, on this bottom route. It's like the last skill you want first is Wind Ranger, but, you know, obviously they were really close to the AM. Any other hero definitely would have been a dead one. Oh, so, for sure. And Hilly actually still have time to go home and probably, yeah, he can just like run there with the creeps, honestly. Oh, they even left him a TP. Isn't that sweet? The battle what great begins. support players. A lot of love on Spirit. Here. Every coin we'll be able to take that and go back. And <laughs> what's happening up here? Pablo put to sleep. Minor body blocking from Goblack. High ground harassment. But the supports will just dance a bit. Nothing really coming out of it. Iceberg will step back to the lane. And now he will get to show what he has got on this Invoker here. And Gims will be showing what he's got on this Wind Ranger. This will be a fun little trade. Iceberg had to go against the Invoker in the last game. Now we will have it himself, but he has the benefit of that friggin' Bane. And you hate it so much. Early cold snap and him harassing you is going to force her away from this lane. And top lane, though. Oh, oh, oh. Afterlife in a bit of trouble. Does go down. They get a nice catch there. Set up with a telekinesis. That early rocket barrage. And First Blood's going to be going to cookies. Radiance top tower is under yeah, attack. Yeah, well, the the difference this time since the nerf, oh, I mean, they're just still trading mid, but we used to see the Banes always coming in with the Null Tiles like every single time. Just Tango, Nulls, and come, you know, deal with this mid laner. But now with the change of the Fairy Fire, they start stacking these with the... <laughs> He's Bob Rossum. All right. Very nice. That little tree up That's there. double the regen the right there. Iceberg. Oh, oh, Shackle. Rubik's here. Rubik, not going to get close enough, it looks like, for Telekinesis. Has to step back. Sleep's going to be there nonetheless. And now this lane is a two-on-two. -two. Or at least Pablo wants them to think that he will always be on standby and force this Bane to be a bit more reserved, especially when he's already been softened up a bit. But how's it happening down here? And not surprised to see this Darkseer kind of having a pretty good time. I mean, he's only getting zoned up by one support. The thing is, though, is Disruptor's actually pretty damn good against Darkseer. With that glimpse, you can't just easily surge away. In fact, he can't surge away from anything right now. He's got no mana. And there's the glimpse. And almost on cue, they're going to get this guy down. Body block. Uh, yeah, you need a bit more. You need more. You got him. You got him. One more. And you KS'd it. Always want to fly. God damn it. Lashara, though, just happy they're able to get the kill nonetheless. And Team Spirit will get themselves on the board. I mean, if there's one support you want against Dax here in lane, it's Disruptor. Yep. If there's one carry you want, it's Anti-Mage. So, yep. Kenzu, he's, he's got his work cut out for him down here. It's going to be a tough, tough one. It was like a classic. One of those days, every single game, Darkseer versus Anti Mage. The only thing that's oh, worse man. now, actually, the best support, the best support against Darkseer is Oracle now. Oracle is. I, was, I knew you were going to say it. Yeah. Oracle is the best. Naga's pretty good, too. If you get those Naga supports, that get ensnare, but Oracle. Yeah, these, these Ion Shell creeps that he's getting actually recovery farm from, those won't even exist. I mean, that's a dirty hero to pick yeah. against Darkseer. Dirty. Especially if they're right next to each other, so you get the AoE purge on them, too, so they lose both iron shells. Yeah. Uh, that's some good stuff right there. Good stuff. 100 good stuff. But top lane. We check back. The return of Afterlife, who also been struggling a bit, now just holds his regen onto two mangoes. Actually, we got to cut back to bottom lane here. Engagement out. Always One Fly does have Glimpse here. It's only level one, but has the range to get the pullback here. Darkseer trapped between two. Not trapped yet, though. And, uh, well, he's locked inside this kinetic field. Pablo's trying to help him out, but it might not be enough. It won't be. Always want to fly again. The KS Lord picks up that kill. Team Spirit double up now 2-1. to one. Pablo's always there to respond, but unfortunately Spirit are the ones getting the kills, and this is all the better for their bottom lane and for their AM. And how's mid lane going for him? Boker just inching ahead here of this Wind Ranger right now. So that's two lanes going well. Afterlife has not been caught out since that one time, so... I have to say, Team Spirit, pretty nice start. Yeah, looking a lot better since they didn't get caught by that whole Lone Druid Death Prophet thing. Game's looking quite a bit more even in total here. And uh, Afterlife, probably the only one who's not having the best time here for the side of Team Spirit. Yeah. Well, at least he's not getting caught out too bad. It looks like because Pablo has to put his attention elsewhere, he knows that he can actually hang out in the lane. So even though he's not still getting crazy farm, he's getting XP. But as I say that, uh -oh. I, I curse him a little bit Caster here, it looks curse. like. Yeah. Oh, he does get a nice stun. That might be all he needs here. I don't think Dazzle will get oh, enough. Oh, Another right click. It. Yeah, it's close, Dyer's but not enough. That one attack. little stun there definitely did help. And uh, Yeah, that one stout shield proc at the end there, too. Whew. Saved his life. Pro man shield. Or rather, all poor man shield. Yeah. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. And now, 
Bane is actually going to possibly take an adventure elsewhere. He's been hanging around a lot towards this bottom lane. Have they been making stacks? No, no stacks made up yet. Afterlife still hanging in the lane with no regen, man. He is thirsty for levels. He's like, I have wallet still yeah, here, kind of near the tower. Three point two is like, yeah, it's like kind of high, but this is some risky stuff here. Oh well, as long as uh, Gims doesn't go up top for a rune and spot this out, he should be okay. Get like that, you know. When was that six point eight four? You got Dying cross map power top. shot enabled on this hero. <laughs> it's so big now, but uh, Gims will just be in the mid lane for now, so not too much concern. Just Goblack to worry about. Yeah, who is not that far away. And a Wind Ranger on edge is not a very happy Wind Ranger. And she wants to continue to do so here. And Alacrity out. Iceberg. Get the hell out of my lane. Easily bumps him back. And just those three shots, she's down the half-life. That poor little thing. Going to be forced to bottle up right now. Oshara bottom lane. Your CS king right now. 34 and 10. And this is what you do. You know, going against Darkseer lanes typically, you know, it sucks. You're a melee core and you're going to be eating a lot of iron shell damage. But you just double up and get the rings right away. Ring of health. Ring of regen. Obviously, we'll turn that into a headdress, into a future Vlad's, and obviously the Battle Fury. But with all this regen, the laning phase, this Iron Shell, plus even just the one casual point in the Spell Shield is enough. And you don't have to worry too much about all that extra damage. Yeah, he's just hanging up, man. Let him go for the boots. Who needs them? Poor man shield. All this regen. Call it the circular build. And uh, he's on top of the net worth. Pablo, nice little take of that Hastrin right there. Messing around with the supports a bit. Has to use the telekinesis to get away from always want to fly. It's a haste rune. Top is going to be reserved, though. The bounty rune, it looks like, will be snagged up from Iceberg. No, Afterlife. Give me that bounty rune. He's like, I need to get this level 6. I need to be the playmaker here. And he might. Oh. Man, who sedated these teams in between games? What's happening here? Yeah, they so definitely chill. know that this is, like, elimination game for both teams. Their uh, BTS yeah. Europe life will be over <laughs> with the loss of this. We kick them right out the door. So... We'll see. It's important. This happens every time in these best of three eliminations, you know? Yep. Like, oh, we got to take it serious now. Nice and easy here. Afterlife just looking to mooch. He's on right on a sentry here. But not until this Pablo Gaming shows up that he may be in trouble. It's just around just a bit too long. And uh, this might be end. Ash is already rolling in. They got the telekinesis. They got the call down. And he will go down. All right. I mean, it doesn't get more straightforward than that there, my <laughs> Casual rotation in from uh, <laughs> Mr. Pablo, Afterlife, who we know is thirsty for XP. Oh? He will pay the price. This is Nightmare, but I don't know. Oh. Sunstrike? Okay, yeah. Okay. He's That's cute. Forces out the wall. Man avoids there. He goes down. Lashra. Going to be able to pick that one up. Nice Ooh, glimpse bye -bye. back, Ash. Back you go. Iron Shell? To the oh. top lane. And Iron Shell will be... Nearly avoided right there. All right, good heads up play from them. They'll get rewarded with a takedown of a Dark Seer and force Gyro to lose 75 gold. Good for them. <laughs> good for you. Well, good for them. Lashara, he's heading up right towards that Battle Fury. Who needs boots? Uh, unnecessary. He just wants to sit down here in front. We've already seen they've committed the ward up on the high ground here, trying to spot out any TP Loser. rotations, any smokes, any of that. You know, nasty little business towards their anti mage. He yeah. is their golden ticket. And we'll be looking to protect him. And Afterlife just going to keep the gyro busy up here as long as he can. Try and stop those early rotations we often see. Yeah, plus it's great when you have a disruptor in this lane and you have that ward because when you see people just trying to, like, oh, I'll TP way behind the tower or in these trees where they won't see me, that glimpse won't get me. No, he will catch you. And when you quickly think you're going to have a double rotation in the bottom lane, one of you is going to be hightailing it back. He's has He has mercy on him there and doesn't sweep in for any sort of glimpse. Just Not making some casual that. pulls happen now so this AM can continue to get a safe space for his farm. And uh, not too sure exactly why Pablo is down here. It looks like they're maybe hoping to get a pick on Disruptor or something, but this Darkseer should still be attack. okay by himself just dishing out the Iron Shells. He'll just be walking around a lot otherwise. So we'll see if Pablo is needed elsewhere in the meantime. Yeah, I'm not sure if he's trying to like maybe get some lane experience while yeah. Kazu scouts with some of these stacks here. Um, but not, nothing really to phase Lashara. He can just sit on the wave, still farming. Still having a good time. Gyro actually went home to regen, so he lost out on a lot of time here. Uh, has a TP ready to sign where he wants to go. Probably maybe think they're going to head bot and try and get something together as three. Yeah, they have a call down, so... He, man, he is just waiting there. 
They're like, is there going to be a setup here? Maybe they're waiting for the wave to push out and he'll go bottom. Yeah, he's going bottom, staying way it's behind. Knows that, yeah. Always want to fly somewhere, Lord. but Team Spirit are onto this one. They know Gyro's bottom lane already. And they are already putting back. Will there be a response from Team Spirit to maybe use this as a counterfight opportunity, or will they just wait back and force them, cookies honestly. to waste their time? Yeah, they might just work force cookies to waste their time here. No, ah, she's like, hey, ah, what's going on? Just shows himself <laughs> as if the, he could just assume they don't know he's there, but now they definitely would <laughs> if that was the case. And I think that I mean, with that move, like give he has up. no fear. Now the wind they range might is die here. Like they know they gotta do Couriers something. over here? Like, what's Radiant's happening, fellas? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, they need to shackle. That's, that's the big one, I guess. He's here now. Uh, no one in position quite yet. They're swarming this tower. They're like gonna, they're gonna smoke him out. Man. Always Want to Fly doesn't have a TP and they know it. They're like, he's in there. He's not... There he is. They're peeking in. They both don't have TPs, so either assistance will be ne needed or they're gonna need to juke their way out. There's the rotation. They already get the Thunder Strike there. Looks like they might get Darkseer down. Loshara already blinks out to his safety zone here on the other front. Look who's interjecting here. Iceberg. Soul takedown on the Pablo. Quick, quick drop. Two for two. They're rolling in. Goblack stuck in the middle. Gets a nice brain step off here on the Gims, but not going to be able to finish him off. Earn charge, though. Very nice damage. Iceberg, though, may have overextended himself, and he'll go down. A double kill from the Loshara, Grave. Going in. Jump in, Loshara just blows up the Wind Ranger. And we'll make his way back out from the other side here. I don't think yeah, Dazzle's not gonna do anything about it. Radiant structures All right, fortified. six to six. Been calm for a while, but just before the storm, Loshara, the lone survivor Radiant's here from Team Spirit, and that tier one tower will go down. Yeah, after all that committal, they definitely need it, but they will snag up the tower, definitely limiting the space for Loshara to farm and. One of the issues there was we talked about how, like, oh, they can't kill Lashara and everything, and it was true. Like, they threw everything on him, and he still managed to get out, but he couldn't come back in until, like, yeah, he got a little pick off. But then your invoker was just kind of in there, didn't have anyone to partner up with. Um, the initial spells from the Disruptor didn't really latch on to anything, so uh, they secure the tower. All in all, good rotation, and they'll probably start uh, doing the same thing top here. There is a smoke, though, from Goblack up here. Let's see if you can find anybody. They're rolling like through right now, nearby. Uh-oh, a Darkseer, and ouch. He just walks in, gets Carapace from the shell, and he's done. Quick and easy, and it looks like a follow-up may be in order for them. Pablo caught Cold Snap, Shackle from the low ground. Actually uh, gives him the time, and he is out from the stolen blink. I'm gonna say. Sleep. Oh, that's not gonna hit. There's another Shackle ready now. He can get two. He's waiting, though, on the low ground. There it is, the catch. It's gonna be an always wanna fly. Call down, locks him in place, the Disruptor. Just gets assaulted right there. Good work from Cookies. Meanwhile, AM and AM things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This time, they are. I'm liking this. Finding the aggressive setups now, but not getting too over eager. Uh oh. Oh, what happened now? What have I done? Tornado's out. <laughs> this stun will miss though, and it looks like they'll be fine. Team Spirit rotating back up to top lane here. They're persistent, man. Yeah, they got the mechanism now, so this grouping up Radiant's get a little bit easier. Oh, God, trying to six. go for the ward! Shackled, he wants to die for it, he doesn't get it there either! Oh! Ah, denied. Pablo, you dirty dog. It was even gonna expire. Like, <laughs> the ward had no time left whatsoever. It was oh. like two seconds away from dying. and That, of course, means they get to spot out this fresh sentry. He just knew that just leaving it. from the previous fight, the advantage that Wind Ranger had just seeing everything, he's like, there's something there. But you're right, it was already at the back end of its expiration, and he just hands over his own life going for it. That's got to be uh, very frustrating. Invoker now put his puts, puts his attention back to the mid lane now, poking at it a bit. Ash is here to respond, but it looks like he might not be alone. Pablo's back, and he's got Blink, so be careful. Blink telekinesis is set up. Gyro has call down. Could be a disaster for anyone who shows himself in this mid lane. Uh-oh. And near the top rune where we might have action. Static Storm. Call down is coming in. And Gims gets a grave. Barely kept in alive. Afterlife persistent for it. But now we'll be forced. They all TP to make it out. Goblack. Barely. Barely. Able to make it away. Bottom lane though. Look at that. They got the jump and a kill on the AM here. Was that a solo kill from Darkseer? 
All right. That's... I just don't even know. He must have blinked in and got walled immediately and just... His own illusion must have burned his mana so we couldn't... He's pinging it now like his team was like, what happened down there? He's like, I got him right here. I got him right here. Oh, glimpse back on Ash. Looks like they might get this gyrocopter. He had mana. How did he die? I have no idea. All right. Lift it up and down. They get the crush on the always want to fly here. Gims could be the next to fall. Oh! Nice little catch there from Pablo with that Media's stolen stun. They will get another grab and possibly this tier one. AM's back now and goes right to top lane to resume farm. But Cookies on the warpath now. This game was once nearly a 2k advantage for Team Spirit and has quickly flipped to 2k plus the other way. Oh man, just cannot emphasize how important that kill on Lashara is. Like, he would have had his battle period, he'd still be farming. He'd probably like four camps in by now. Instead, now he's about 200 gold away. Obviously, not that far, but every second counts when you're up against this guy, man. No, and, yeah. Uh, it just means a longer time before he becomes online. And, and they're ready to go on cookies. Like, they could even start looking towards Roshan. I'm not sure if they have any. Radiant's no medallions out yet. Dazzle's saving attack. up a little bit of cash, though, so. Yeah. I would expect him to get, get one for sure. If they're even considering the Rosh at all. Also, very good against the AM, of course. So, this has got to be something on the priority list. We'll see, though. For Team Spirit now, which Radiant's is, you know, turning one of those games where you might have to put a lot onto the shoulders of this AM. Got to figure out what the uh, what the other four are going to be up to at this point. This is normally when, you know, Invoker is getting pretty close to an Orchid and starts running around Radiant's and being a madman with that. But if this Orchid doesn't come online that fast, I don't think he'll be very scary. So we'll see. Cookies are gonna, just going to... Poke a bit at this tier one in the top lane Dyer's in the meantime. Has been killed. What the hell? Courier goes down, picked off. It looks like from Afterlife, just rummaging through the woods. Gets the pick. Doesn't have anything on it, but hey, free gold nonetheless for Team Spirit. Dyer's bottom tower is under oh, they're going to smoke up here. Uh, cookies. Yeah, that mid tower. And, tower yeah, that orchid attack. actually is going to be pretty scary. So he can easily burst down. Pablo, Steph, yeah, even the Wind Ranger, honestly, early on. So. They're trying to find something, but it looks like the split push. Rumble Shara and oh, top lane, that's Static Storm on Kezu. He will go down to the Fiend's Grip. So the rest of the team smoked up, and he's going down with Ash heading up there. I kind of always want to fly. A yep. one for one, I suppose. It's just a support takedown for the Dark Seer. Spear could be oh, happy with that, but it cost him a lot of ultimates. But oh, look at Gim steps in. That Shackle not long enough to catch on those trees behind. A sleep and a stun will ensure their getaway, it looks like. Pablo not going to be able to get close enough for the lift. And all the meanwhile, it's going to be a trade of towers here. Tower on the top lane goes down from the Radiant side, but bottom is going to be grabbed up from Spirit. Casual trade of economy both ways here. Spirit happy to take this one down the road. Ash is taking up as much as possible here on his gyrocopter, but can't help but wonder how he's going to match up in the AM in the, in the late game. Looks like he's going to step off yeah. for a BKB in the meantime. I mean, typically we see the AM. He'll usually be about second, Dyer's third, maybe sometimes even fourth in their net worth by the time he gets to Battle Fury. This time he was like tangoing top two already, like already ahead in terms of the farm game. And the Battle Fury online, he's already picked up his treads. He's got a Vlad stun. He's working towards the Yasha now. Like he is just a machine. And we already saw what happened last game when it went late. So I'm expecting Team Spirit to have kind of the same going forward from here. And cookies, I don't know. They got to get these big plays, these vacuums into call downs, really make good use of the mechanism, and probably abuse Roshan if they can, but it's always scary up against the Disruptor. Yeah. As well as Quaswex. You don't want to be caught in those choke points when you got a tornado and a huge kinetic field slash stack storm coming your way. Cookies need to make sure if they're going to make any sort of Rosh play that they have the proper vision for it. And it is going to be a. Uh, Medallion, it looks like here for Dazzle. He's got the chainmail already. Dyer's so they will be able to have that Roche potential attack. in the near future. But now we look at Team Spear. We have Afterlife here on the Prowl and Vendetta. He's a bit oh, cautious a here. Yes, he can't go too far and invade. It looks like he won't. We'll hold back and they'll be okay for now. Darkseer goes back on the move here. I believe. Did he finish out Grieve straight up in the last game or do you. Did he put priority in the blink early? And is he going to be looking to do the same this game? Maybe if... Oh, I mean, he will need to get a blink eventually. I mean, when you're talking late, late game on a Darkseer in a game like this, you know, Sheepstick is something necessary. So you have a 
a blink sheep stick to help get this AM. But I'm just curious if he favors getting that initiation in the mid part of this game. I would assume, just because it's not that much of an added benefit early on uh, compared to the blink dagger. Mm -hmm. To like stack these up into the grease. But hey, look at that. He got out the guiding grease. So what do I know? Um, certainly will help with the Roshan taking, is that appears to be what they're heading for now. Gonna have the Sentry Ward, make sure Afterlife doesn't yeah. spot up this out. I guess the and nice thing, uh... nice deep for it. Right here, so... Yeah, they're, gonna, they're gonna know, they're not coming. Good behind the back play here from Cookies. They don't really have a lot of damage though, even with the help of the Medallion. It is gonna take a little bit of muscle power here. So they'll start going to work with this. Oh. And, uh, I can understand oh, I that... Uh oh, that's what I'm talking about. Choke point tornado catches a lot of them. This Roche still needs a lot of time. EMP. Now they got to get out, or they risk losing all of their mana. Ash has none. And look who's running up and around here. Pablo trying to distract them. There's going to be the pullback insta kill with the setup oh. of the static storm. But that's a big shackle into a call down, into a vacuum, into a wall. Holy shit! Look at cookies go. They're going to get afterlife here, Carapace though. Oh, what a nice shot right there. Are you kidding me? Well played there. Gims gets the catch. Three go down all day. Roche still stands. They can finish what they started here. If the, But they also have to worry about this AM. Tier 1 top lane. Remember, was not involved in that fight whatsoever. Loshara just spending that time into farming up. But cookies. Big win for them. And it looks like they'll secure the Roche at the end of the day. Oh, or, or? Alright. Alright. Uh oh, now Iceberg might. Iceberg is just trouble. hungry Body for kills here. He's running. Oh, yeah, peace out, boys. Alright. Woo. Okay. Oh, man. That was a little scary. He had the dunk ready and available when Kezzy was sitting on such low mana, but that let him go. That is a Aether Lens Assassin, so that'll be interesting to see up with the. The Impale and, of course, the Mana Burn. That is what God's got oh, also God. when we played in our pub. Aether Lens. Did he combine it with the eggs? He got the eggs. So <laughs> got the Octarine also. Cross map. It is crazy yeah. good. Mana Leaks Dang. and the stun, of course, is just really, really good. If this Nyx gets an Ags this game, this, this could be a problem for Cookies. A gift from the so we'll see. Battle. They better have their detection in order and a way to deal with it because the regen is just nothing to scoff at either. So their work will be cut out yeah, for them. They did? Grab a gem on someone. Where is. Do they leave it in base? They have it on the curve. Okay, they're applied yeah. up now. Um, so once Invoker got away that time, I think they were finally just like, all right, we can't let that happen again. Like, we need to get some kills on top of uh, Iceberg here. So. Uh, well, sure, man. Oh, BKB was actually forced out from Ash there. That's massive. Even. Hmm. Wants to keep the Aegis so bad that he will use his 10 second BKB. And now the little backstab always want to fly in the mid lane. Yeah, he's moving in. Tornado Static Storm Pablo should be going down very quick, but always want to fly. Could be the response here for Gims, and it will be. Support for a support. Response in from Cookies here. His Dark Seer looks to charge in. Not going to get the catch on to anyone. We're not having that blink makes it a bit more difficult, but the Greaves, I guess. Makes sense if he did get caught out with an orchid or something. Could shrug off that silence. We'll see Cookies Yeah, certainly. Now. We've already seen. I mean, he got that big vacuum off without it. Who needs who needs Blink? Who needs Blink? <laughs> Goblet gets his own little bit of me time here in the top lane, split pushing himself. Knows that AM is nearby to kind of intercept any trouble or at least scout it out. And they're good about, like we said in the last game, complimenting them. They're good about utilizing what map they got. And... Farming up. This AM is still nearly 5k ahead of the next closest, which is the gyro. So it's almost a full luxury <laughs> item. So we'll see. The transition from the mid to late game is still up in the air for me. Could depend on like the next fight or so. We'll see. I think uh, Gims is going to be in very much need of that blink dagger. Because now, uh, not only like do you have to deal with the fact that AM... Uh, like before, you could at least mana dodge the shackle if you had the perfect timing, but now it's fully disjointable. So you really need that like blink on top shackle. Yeah. If you want to lock down this AM for an extended period of time. Without question. Oh, Steph. He's trying to scout out. Always want to fly, who is 
hanging out in the woods here. I don't know if he planted anything, but he's acting as if he did plant something. And it forced him at least power shot and scout out. But even this annoying little support is kind of forcing rotations from cookies and drawing their attention away. While Spirit are just like, it's fine, we got one farming in our jungle, we got one farming bottom lane, we got another one farming in the jungle on this front, we got always one fly farming in the top lane, we're just gonna farm, farm, farm. And the response from Cookies is, we're gonna push down mid lane so you stop farming and come here and defend, <laughs> because they feel like they have the better team fight, I suppose. They're moving in, they're starting to siege this tier too, but look at the draw out on the map. Always one fly is like, you guys push bottom, I'm pushing top. This is fine, we can lose our tier two. We'll continue to get a lot more right, from well. this in the end. Ooh, I like this cap by Lashara as well. Trying to stop them from going any further. He needs to kill these creeps from the side of Iceberg to re-enable the back door. Going to work with the focus fire here. Kinetic Field still has them trapped after life. Going to get the catch of the stun right now. Gims will have to be careful. No Aegis here. Always one fly, gonna get the glimpse, pulls her right back at the front door, and it gets both of them with a static storm. Ash is going to try to zone them back with the call down. The grave is gonna help keep Gims alive, but now they have the Fiends grip onto Ash. A vacuum will help cancel it, and Goblack will be going down from it. Loshara, though, commits in big, big man avoid. Just annihilates the Dazzle. Good damage as well onto the Darks here. Now follow up damage onto Ash. Gonna force out the Aegis on the back inside. Iceberg drops down the EMP here. Loshara gonna be going down, though. Ash with a double kill. Back on his second life. They look for Iceberg here. They got the vision, of course, with a gem. Pull back from the Telkinesis. Oh my God, They're going to no get the kill. Pass. That's it. No buyback on this AM. No buyback on this Invoker. means this Rax is going down. Hell, Cookies could go for a second. Maybe even just end the game outright. Here and now, if they decide to try to get another lane push. But they have Tier 2s to work for. And, uh, oh my goodness, well, the pings. They're not even controlling the illusion. They're like, dude, control your illusion. Zoo, what are you doing? <laughs> and he's going to run back, and all of a sudden, Ash is looking to go in again. Get slipped up from Gallblack. Always want to fly, looking for a setup. No static storm. They're just holding him here. Cookies is just entertaining a thought. I think they should have just went to another lane and pushed down a tier 2 or committed for some tier 4 damage or something. Oh, well. Big fight nonetheless. A huge net worth swing back the other way once more. Mod packs. Now it was back up to a 4K for Team Spirit. It is now slowly inching the way of cookies. Yeah, it's like it, it grows and grows as Lashara gets a little bit of space and then one misstep and, well, you lose your mid racks. And fortunately, they were relatively low on mana thanks to a couple of those EMPs. So Gims, uh, they actually, I thought they were going to get out pretty scot free from Team Spirit just because there were no more focus fires or anything, but they were able to clean it up largely thanks to the gyrocopter. Uh, and the Aegis, and now he's going to replace that with an Eagle Song. So, heading towards what we assume will be the Butterfly, not like the Eternal Envy E Blade or some of that nonsense. But <laughs> uh, Afterlife, I don't know. This this is one of the issues with Nyx. Like, it's good when you're behind because you have the Agnum Scepter. But what can he really do right now besides scout out and versus a gem? This is you know this is some risky business. Yeah. Oh, get to scout out into Pablo. Pablo gets his own force over. Stunned up, and oh, quick commitment in from Oshara, and oh, not able to get the grave off. Steph will not save Pablo. That's a nice little pick there for Lashara. And Spirit and just kind of... pays off that time. Yeah, Spirit just let him know, like, hey, you got that last fight, but we're back in control right now. Dyer's and it looks like they'll secure easy mid one tower attack. after the glyph. And this opens up now the space around this Roche pit, which Dyer's it looks like we got another minute or so, and we'll fallen. see the secondary timer. Could be a big one for either side. They start pinging the area already. Cookie's looking to intercept something. No, it does not look like they'll have the opportunity. If it goes to farm, I think Spirit are just going to be fine stepping away and just playing the economy game a bit. Radiant it's pressure on Cookies to really make the push happen. That's how everything started the last go around, and they may do it again here soon. Yeah, lately it's always been these Ember Spirits whipping it out, it seems, in these late-game scenarios. AM, long forgotten, but he's back, baby. Now he's going to be around the map. He's got his own Battle Fury, so they'll have to tango with him. And if they can get the Aegis on top of him, he's going to be very hard to bring down twice. The smoke, though. Games with the Blink Dagger. He's going to... Oh, he needs to figure out where they are, though. They'll find Afterlife. Yep, find Afterlife. The better of the two. They might get a second one with it. Mana Leak was stolen here from Pablo. Pablo, though, can't really get the space across to catch. Always oh, want to fly. There he is. Vacuum him. Got him. Always want to fly. Not going to be able to make it away here. 
Double kill for the Darkseer. All right, a couple of picks, a successful smoke. The rest of uh, Spirit, though, not too faded about it. They go right back into their farm. Loshara goes right back to work. Just where he was taken down and did not have a buyback. Suddenly since then, he's got a BKB in his pocket and nearly 3.2K. And uh, what do you wager here? Is it necessary for him to have to go in MKB? I guess so. <laughs> that answers my question. He picks up yeah. a javelin. So to answer the response of the butterfly of the gyrocopter and, of course, the Wind Ranger, it seems like MKB is just a necessity. Yeah, it's definitely really solid this game. Um, and still no real lockdown purchase up here yet. Um, you talked about probably the Scythe later on for the decks here. I would agree with that. Somebody needs some extra lockdown. Like, it can't be just the Shackle Shot at this point because with the BKB on top of the AM, you need to jump him. Because 10 seconds, imagine 10 seconds of this guy just going off in your team right now. And if he is an MKB during that, that's either your Gyrocopter or your Wind Ranger just yeah. simply like flat out dead. Um, especially the Wind Ranger with no BKB. It's going it's gonna have to be that guy. Yeah, sheep stick on Darkseer without question. And it's gonna be them to be the ones to try to jump and get that upper hand. They need to be dictating this game and they can't afford to allow the spirit to just continue to farm and then you have the slow sieging and the bit by bit and the dominating of the Roche and well here we see afterlife. Oh quick blink away avoids the shock or avoids the shackle. We'll be TPing out. Yeah, that's a kill in 6.85 right there. Yeah. <laughs> so that would have been a big change to Wind Ranger. I think that was just the nerf that you needed to not obliterate the hero, but definitely change <laughs> Kim's misses yeah. the blink into the pit. I think so as well. But yeah, no, I, I really like that change. Look at Afterlife trying to snipe a courier here. That's the only reason he's up this far. Yeah. Sorry for him. Sneaky little it's guy. It's way back in the fountain. Not going to be happening. And look at this. Cookies. Move into the Roche pit here. They need this one. Just in case something is to go wrong, they will have the back end of a second life. I mean, that helped them in the last fight. Ash's second life is what helped push the game on in. This time, though, it's going to be handed over to Gims here. Has that blink, obviously. Now building up in the crit. The damage is coming together for her. Nick still. Uh oh. Oh, this is the moment. They've been waiting for the courier. Just passed over. <laughs> all this time and uh, parts of that butterfly now coming up but there's the MKB so yeah, nice yeah, butterfly. I'm sure Ash will be like ah dang nabbit that sounds like something Gyrocopter would say yeah well oh 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 is it gonna happen oh oh aha Dyer's oh dream has been killed. <laughs> boom aha <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so. very Just nice he waited a long time for it and the payoff Radiant's will be worth just a quarter staff attack. and a full magic wand but that is the Radiant Precious Butterfly. Going to be delayed a bit, but as you already mentioned, not really going to matter. MKB has already been completed here Dyer's on the side of Team Spirit. And, well, they're feeling pretty good after that Radiant's takedown. Oh, glimpse fallen. back. Don't even think about coming right now. Spirit on the retreat here, but they catch Telkinesis on the Iceberg, and it will force him to BKB and uh, TP out. Unfortunately, though, for Mr. Goblack, he doesn't have a BKB, and his Bane will get crushed. But they're happy. They continue to make moves on the map, forcing cookies, dragging them along, making them respond. All while little Oshara continues to farm up. Just got that MKB and already has nearly 1,200 gold here. This is more of where cookies are going to need to find some sort of push window now. Especially now that they have this Aegis. If they're stuck defending the whole time and not really being able to be offensive with this Aegis, that's a loss in itself. So we'll see what they can do. That's still... 4,500 gold, man. He's waiting up. I, I gotta imagine. It's it's just gotta be the sheep. Like, they need a pick up on this AM so they can get aggressive and not risk losing a major objective while they're trying to attain one for their own. So, well, Shire, man, this farm, 7,000 gold up ahead. Invoker now closely in third place as well. Uh, so, a lot better in terms of the overall farming coming out here from the side. Like, we, we talked about, um, was it, it was Ash who was struggling before on the uh, the PL, so he's he's doing a lot better this game. Still above the mid lane Invoker as well, but I don't know the other three heroes on Team Spirit. Obviously the AM, he's way up there, but they're they're slowly falling behind, just trying to pick up little little nitty bitty items that they can. And Pablo is he in trouble? He's got no detection. He may be. Afterlife right. will head north. He is quickly on the tail here. Of it's like Rubik. the Jaws theme song playing or something here. Yeah. Da -na. Da -na. 
And sniped. Okay, Lashara, good work. Was an act of charity. <laughs> uh oh, they want it. They want it though. They go in, call down. Not gonna catch oh. him, Shackle. Oh. No, he is out. It's a hit and run, and there is nothing they can do about it. Again, another pickoff for Spirit. It forces Cookies all there to respond, and they're not able to get much from it. Last time it was Goblack. This time, nada. Now with his own BKB, so you know, 3,500 3, gold on top. He's already used it once, be willing to whip out that 9 second one here. And gonna help up against the Darks here, don't wanna be in that wombo combo. And oh my god, 5k gold. Just buy it, man. Just do it. You're killing me. I'm like so scared, it's just gonna be a Shiva's or something, and I just don't feel like that's gonna be the item. Yeah, it's gotta be sheep for sure. Quit pulling my leg. Get in there. Okay. <laughs> Take out that bird camp and get to work. Top lane. All right. Just more pushback here. Team Spirit just confidently. Yeah, we got one guy farming top. Evoker working through the jungle. On the other side, Afterlife looking for a potential new setup here. He also has a good chunk of change he's been saving. I imagine he will go for a blink. Make these setups a bit easier. We'll see, though. Plus, allows him to jump in with the Carapace to disrupt any setup here from Cookies. As he continues yeah, to stock out weight lane. Stock and wait out this mid lane quite a bit. Arcane rune bottom. Oh, oh. Oh, Rubik's gonna grab it. <laughs> I uh -oh. gotta say I'm Afterlife. Oh. Uh, he just just gets the info. He's looking for courier again. What a nice guy. Yeah, I I gotta say, like, it's a tough call here between Blink or working towards your Agnims. Um Maybe, like, you might just save the gold just for a little bit longer, try and figure out if they're going to be able to get a couple more picks. Like, one more pick, honestly, at this point in the game, and you just go eggs because it's going to be four or 500 gold infusion right into yeah. your bank stash. But at the same time, like, maybe he's thinking, I'm going to need my buyback. Like, I don't know. So, tough call for him. But Loshara definitely giving him the space to make it a possibility here. And look how deep... Always want to fly up here. Like we talked about before on the Dazzle, how deep he was and he got caught out and killed, but he's getting so much right now. Yeah, they're reading the map really well, and that's probably mostly thanks to Afterlife here bringing in that bit of intel. He sees where they all are, and he may pay worth his life, but, you know, it sucks. He's been waiting there a long time just to eventually get caught off and killed, but with that intel, you see someone like Always Want to Fly comfortably able to farm out that top lane. You see Bane comfortably nearby, AM comfortably farming elsewhere. They get a lot out of it, but top lane, they might lose a bit more. Those supports, you know, been hanging around this top lane a bit too long now. Gets to sleep. They both look to retreat here. And, yeah, again, Goblack, the one guy who's not going to make it out. He goes down. He did it. Scythe in hand. We're ready. Everything's okay in our lives now, but the boots of travel now for Lashara can make him even harder to track down. And, man, he is looking pretty sick slotted. It's like basically Vlad's for heart or something at this point is really all that's left. And then maybe ditching that Battle Fury. Yeah. I'm curious how he decides. Maybe the lockdown gets like a Bissell Blade? Fill the spot of the Battle Fury? I'm not sure. We'll see what he decides to go yeah, for. Yeah, certainly. I mean, no MKB either on their team. I guess he could also. Yeah, that's also a point. Yeah. Like maybe instead of a heart, go for the butterfly as well. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I suppose both natural MKB carriers. But haven't committed the gold to it quite yet. Yeah, she's holding a bit right now, but since completing out the data list, it's just going to have to keep in reserve. Maybe waiting to see what the AM is going to be going for here as they adventure through this bottom lane. But here is Team okay, Spirit smoke. now. We don't see this very often from them, not in recent time. They smoke up and come together. They are going to have Lushra just go right back to his casual AM farm in the mid lane. But the rest of his team are on the move, and they are making their way all the way to the top, but it looks like Cookies may be out at that same point. It looks like they themselves are looking to come together and do their own bit of smoke action. So maybe a clash if they decide to head up through their own woods with this smoke. We'll see. Or not smoke and just head up in there. Oh, okay. Oh, there it goes. Smoke is out. Team Spirit leave. Cookies might catch them on the way out, though. Here they go. Oh, They're moving in. Jump. Big vacuum. Big wall. Sag Storm is a good response, but they have a BKB here on Ash, so his call down's going to go through, and it's going to go to work right now. That with the flat cannon made his muscle through three. 
Iceberg, BKB TP, he will make it out and he will be safe. Oshara going back in the lane, cr cutting the creep wave. He knows he, that they have lost this fight. This tier two will be going down, but if he's able to cut these creeps, they will be stuck possibly attack. on backdoor protection. Wind Ranger is desperate to push Radiant's out this wave so that their creeps stay alive. They need to keep this range creeps and this catapult alive if they want to do some work here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much no other option here. Loshar, he'll come back. I think they're going to be what? fine to hold this high ground. They're going to lose. They're going to lose a little bit of damage, but I think they can hold oh, off. EMP could be huge for the dunk. We'll see. Jump in. Oh, he goes for it. There's going to be a good, good pop. And now cookies need to get out. I don't think they're going to get the chance here. Soul blink. And Loshara. Second guess is a commitment. Makes the blink chase, but Rubik will make it out. Okay. That I thought was going to be a bit worse for Cookies, but they get a big gyro takedown nonetheless. Both cores actually go down at the end of that one. Spirit lose a bit. But already 7.4k on AM. <laughs> yeah. Invoker in the AM. So well played. They held out. They have a lot of money right now. And they are really in a solid spot. This is just going to be an easy tier 2 for them. I think Cookies really needed that to be a, a game changing fight. Like a big... And it looked like it was going to be uh, after the, the uh, three picks up top. But couldn't quite reel it in, you know? Just couldn't get, like, the big cores out of the picture, too. And with only a takedown of the supports and the offlaner, those two cores, now at this point, Invoker and AM both can outspam very nicely. They almost got Pablo there. They can outspam so well and delay that the supports just have such... Lower death timers that they were able to come back and be in the action right away. And now Spirit move in. And it looks like it could be a possible easy Roche pickup. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Or not. Power Shot already scouts it out. There's the weave. The weave. Vacuum back. Oh, no. It's not going to be on the high ground. Aegis will be snagged Very up here from the Invoker. Storm. The Static Storm, as you said, locks him in place. Steph's going to be forced to run into the pit to hide. Nice Shackle Shot on the Invoker here, and they'll take him down. That's going to be the Aegis Pop. AM already gone. They will get the second life, it looks like, here of Iceberg Ghost Walk. Running back it away. They'll take him down. They know they're going to need the buyback. AM just uses it now and goes right to work towards this top lane, and Cookie's now back on the offensive. Yeah, that fight, uh, and it's always risky up against the Darks here. And I, I liked what he went for there uh, from Always Want to Fly with the Static Storm. Like, he threw it on top of all of them, like, on themselves. So, like, oh, they can't blink in. Like, we don't want everyone jumping on top of us. But it ended up not hitting anybody. And then, like, where's your, like, re-engagement tool? Or, like, how are you going to counter-initiate without your Static Storm on top of the enemies? So, certainly going to be a tough one here. It's they got probably the... on this dunk again. Buyback already out in Volker. What a long jump in from Pablo. You're talking force blink. Vacuum follow up here. The call down. And this could be the game ender here for Cookies if this goes well. But look at this. Lashar goes in. A fiend's grip. A stolen one at that. Used onto him, but he's going to be able to make it back and out. Now jumps in. Big man avoid. Wipes him out. Ash looking to retreat out. Steph's going to be going down here. And Lashar just has his way with anyone in front of him. Gets Pablo. Makes a jump. Will get the darks here. Triple kill for him. Everyone but the gyrocopter will go down in a solid hold from Spirit. It looked like Cookies were a bit unsure whether or not to make the push happen after they got the forced out buyback. And yeah, at the end of the day, they do lose quite a bit. They got the mid lane racks down, their base damage so far, but still not convinced that this is Cookies' game. Not yet. Man, these mana voids, unbelievable, eh? Like he is just nailing at least three heroes every single time, obliterating half their HP pools. Most right, like if you if you got a stand in, honestly, like if he was a little shaky, I'll admit at the start of the Sven game, he picked it up in the late, and this game he has been unbelievable. So I re I really hope some mad props get thrown out to this guy from the other people on Team Spirit. Like thank you. Obviously you always want your main guy there, but if he can't be, you're, you're certainly willing to take this guy. I think. Nine, three, and four, and top of the net worth by a good margin here. Easily six slotted. And he did go with that heart, so he is very, very durable. And just goes right back to his casual farming pattern with that bit of split split pressure spice to it. 
Ash will be there to kind of outspam a bit. For now, has a demon edge, but can't help but feel like this is going to be rapier territory. Already has 4 gay gold saved up. And it just might be that time. Oh, that's true. I think you might need to. He's thinking about it here. I mean, Daedalus is not the answer. Unless he thinks he needs an MKB. There's no evasion on AM. I don't think it's really that necessary. I think it's this might be a rapier game soon, so he's holding the money. They don't have the Aegis, though. It's so scary without it. Yeah, that would and be nice. I don't know. It's a tough call. Like, he probably is thinking about it, and he's just sitting here like, oh, I don't know. Like, he wouldn't... Uh, he still needs 800 gold for the buyback story, so um, maybe that might be what he's waiting for. Like, can't afford to just get obliterated once and lose the entire game, so they'll smoke up. Now, do they want it for this? That's a little bit risky. No, they're just going to try and find somebody. What's good for him now is since the last fight, the BKBs are now done on Gims and on uh, Kazoo, the Darkseer. Oh, that's huge. And this Disruptor is actually just got Ags complete. If he could pick this up and use it in this fight, that would be rain on the parade of cookies if he lands a crucial Static Storm. Oh, man, that is just unfortunate timing because they're like, we got these BKBs. This is our time. A right, Static Storm is going to be useless. They're going to be useless. This will be wonderful. But now if they're caught in a bad situation, <laughs> everything is going to be useless for them. It's like an AoE Doom. Oh, it's so good. He didn't get the Aether Lens, though, unfortunately, on this Disruptor to make the setup just that much easier. But something he could still go for in the future if he just really cares for it that much. Otherwise, Cookies, who had been smoked up, make this big <laughs> setup here. And Team Spirit are just like, N we're not having any of it. We're waiting in base. Yeah, well, we talked about it. And it's going to be the Aghanim's Aether Lens on the uh, Infinite. All right, hover over Impale right now. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. See the range on this thing? Impale as he waits in the middle here. This is ridiculous. It goes way out the front door. Oh my god, it's like level one clockwork hook or something here. He's just inching forward nuts. bit by bit. That's going to be a problem now. That's the the godliest the turret in the as game. Well. Yeah. Oh, Against man. four int heroes. They usually get some wards down. So he has great vision out that front door. It is going to be so hard to siege for cookies. I mean... They have great high ground. They have great outspam and defense for when the high ground push comes their way. But for their own team, and maybe even for Team Spirit, both these teams, I don't know how they are uh, infiltrating the base without coming off the back of a big fight. And it's going to be a Daedalus on Gyro. Okay. So he wants the most damage he can get, but not the Rapier kind of damage. Not the Rapier kind of commitment. No, just a little bit too scary, man. You just lose that. It just makes your life so sad. And that, that that's just probably game losing, honestly. Well, I mean, obviously, but I don't see it as being enough of a, a risk. You know what I mean? I don't feel like you're uh, yeah. you're gaining enough by getting the rapier as opposed to what you're probably going to lose. Like, I don't feel like they're that deep in the hole. They're deep, I, I think. I don't think they're, you know, in, in too much of a lean. Only 5k up against an AM is terrifying. So, we shall see. Iceberg, got himself a cheese, got his AC. He's gone for this kind of split build we've seen lately where you, you pick up the Orchid, but then later on you're like, ah, uh, you know, I think I'm going to go back for a little bit more right-click. And... Yeah. And so they're... we wait for the big bad rush. Yeah, I mean, the cookies are going to have to wait. Now that the gyro is committed, I was going to say for this Daedalus, he might have to wait a bit for farm for buyback. But he actually already has 2.7k, so he has still plenty of farm going his way. So he figures if he still has to get a rapier at the end of the day, he'll be able to reserve a lot of gold just for that case alone. Mushara does work here in the top lane still, nearly 5k for him, but he is gladly 6-slotted. Maybe Boots of Travel 2, Moon Shard are to fill out the rest of the AM here. And over on the other side uh, for yes. their core, Gims Every is uh, still got the Daedalus here. Hasn't been able to complete much after that, but still has a ceiling ahead of her and room to grow for sure. So we'll see. Yeah, I'd be interested to see uh, what he actually wants to go for. Like, we could possibly see a more defensive build, um, simply for something like the Lincolns or something like that, so that she's not going to get Nightmare, Fiend Script, uh, even Glint's back. I certainly would would be okay with that because uh, the Daedalus and the Agnes Scepter already adds so much damage. It really does. I'm trying to make it go for this AM, a valiant effort, trying to vacuum straight up north, but he is already long gone the other way. Very elusive Team Spirit squad. 
And the one lone Pablo, who is the, the man who's just pushing out the side lanes here. Seems like lately that's been a trending thing. I've even seen it in some of some pubs as well. Is they'll just leave a support to just continue to just siege out one side lane here, just so there's never really pressured on all fronts, and there's always a reason that they're gonna have to force the team to kind of be more spread thin. But for now, that man is Pablo, and <laughs> he's in no man's land over here. He's it's just doing his own scary, thing. Pretty scary, but thankfully, Lashar went the other way, so his courier still trying to scout at Roche. Time and the action may be forthcoming that much sooner here. Spirit are already oh, on the move. What a good timing to smoke. Are they going to use a go TP? Go right to the pit. They go to the pit, they will find the Roche here. Looks like for now they're trying to see if they can get the catch onto Rubik, who is still around. Oh, if their smoke pops, they're going to know. Oh, the oh, main they're going to know. Oh, they know. Oh, we blinked. Oh, my God. What? He blinked right behind them, but they do still see him. He oh, actually blinks. has a stolen blink. He gets it off. He has notes. He's not TPing, though. He got stunned. Oh, my God. That rage. Blinks out. Now has TP if he wants to use it. He, they're not going to get him. Holy crap. I thought that was going to be a dead Rubik for sure. God, the distance he can cover with Blink Dagger and Soul. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Pablo. <laughs> this guy. He's going to come group up with his team, but he might have just given away their positioning. Oh, but they see that there's a Roche, Roche and they go right in. Oh, I thought this was going to be Spirit to Roche for sure with that smoke move. But now it's Cookies who are going to see it up nice and early. And they're going to be able to ones to take it. Roshan has fallen to the dark. All right. So now, can, can it finally happen? Like, they've been so close on so many attempts, but AM is always there. There's that little bit of a back door, you know? He's, he's the goalie, yep. the, the sliding saves here. He's trying to keep his team in it, so one more chance he'll have. Uh, okay, Pablo, I don't know what Pablo's doing, honestly. <laughs> There's Moonshard, like, all right. I will slow his farm by four seconds. Yeah, I don't know, he's just... Messing with him a bit. Pings out the DD rune here, which might be held out for Ash, who is, seems to be en route. But yeah, AM's moon shard is done. And he is now 7 slotted, ready to go. Boost Travel 2, just kind of still await him here. We'll see if he decides to eventually sell out the Battle Fury once he feels like the extra farm is not necessary and could utilize more damage on top of it. Nice little juke play there from Pablo, just kind of still continues to tease him a bit, knowing that these are not going to be legitimate setups, but toying with them. And the rest of his team making an advancement here in the bottom lane. Early jump in right onto Goblock. The Bane's going to be out. Does have a buyback here. And that's a big static storm. And it's an no. Agnum's one at that. Ash is only going to be kept alive because of the grave. He will go down as soon as it's over, though. And now it's Cookies on oh, the run. God. Big two-man tor tornado catch. But no pursuit here from the rest of Team Spirit. I can just imagine. I, I just, like, Ash must be like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. Like, he had the cheese, he had BKB, but neither of them able to get off. Thanks to that beautiful little Agnum step there from Always Want to Fly. So, again, they will hold, they will stall out. And I don't even know who it favors at this point, honestly. Like, it almost, like, when does the run back ever occur for Team Spirit that they can actually get an objective? If they just dive too deep, they wipe two, and... You're going to have to do it multiple times to deal with these buybacks as well, though. Yeah, I mean, it was scary oh, for a drawn. bit. Yeah, it was scary for a bit while they did not have buybacks, but now they have buybacks again, and it looks like they're like, well, Gyro's out. Let's push mid. Maybe we could force him to buyback. Do they commit after the buyback? I'm not too sure. We'll have to see. I think you run. We'll see. With Spirit, yeah, they seem like the kind of team that's like, we're going to get the buyback, and then we're gone. See you later. So let's see if that's the case or not. They're even gonna give, they have to do something. Alacrity plus Moonshard AM. He's going to be chopping down this tower. So we'll see. Manta early. Telekinesis. They're trying their best to slow this freaking guy down. Gyro will not buy back, though. He only has 10 seconds. And so Team Spirit see that, and they pull back in a way. So just a mild push here. Not going to be leading to a whole lot. And we'll have to step out. I mean, I, I would hope that we're not going to be waiting out for the next Roche. But that could be the case. I'm not too sure here. We'll see if Cookies Feels like are... we've done that uh, twice more already. Yeah. Both these teams, this is where buybacks are going to become very, very important here. Uh, I mean, for now, Cookies don't have them, but they're not that far off. So they might just wait a little bit. I don't know. 
this is like one of those games where it comes down to a big one and done. Like, you have a hell of a fight, buyback, boots to travel in, the second round, and if that round doesn't go good, the game's over. So we'll see. Just curious what the changing factor will be. I mean, Afterlife now with this Hagnum Scepter is not making it easy for Cookies to siege anything at all. And you can almost say the same for Cookies. Vacuum in the call down wall. Pushing to high ground is just not going to come until a fight is won. Maybe one outside of the base. Mott, this might be a long game there, Mott Packs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it feels that way too, but at the same time, if I always want to fly, like misses one static storm, then it, it, we could just be one and done, you know what I mean? That's like, true. It's it's certainly, the pressure is still on. I okay, feel like this time, oh, well, they're they going tried in. to get the cage, but it didn't latch. Oh, he's going to get it again? And he will be kept alive with the shallow grave. Tries the man fight here. The oh, Aegis gosh. is going to be going down. Look at this. Lushara going for the back lines. Looking for the man fight here on the Ash. But it's a gyrocopter. Runs right through him. Buyback is going to have to be used here. Gims potentially caught out into this kinetic field. Cold snapped up now. Looking to step back in the way. Well, they have the advantage. But they will get the mini glimpse. Plus the mana void. She will go down. Stolen blink. Quickly used. Cookies trying to retreat here. Lushara trying to get the most out of this dieback. And he can't quite get the catch yet. They're straight up and above. And it looks like the retreat will be there for Cookies. They don't get any significant siege damage on the base itself. They are going to get what looks like Pablo there at the end. The Wind Ranger will go down, but they don't lose the Gyrocopter. How big of a win is this mop packs for Cookies right now, even though they didn't get any base damage? Was taking the AM down and forcing that buyback. I mean, that's a big win. It's in pretty itself. huge, yeah, because... If they can just get, uh, you know, wind range is going to be back. That's seven minutes, right? So they, they've got that timed out. They're saying to themselves, all right, this is our window. We need a blink. We need a sight. Like, we need to be smoked up sitting in a lane and waiting for him to TP in. And if they get that kill, this game is just immediately over, honestly. And they were so close again. Like, an amazing static storm once more from Always Want to Fly. But unfortunately, Iceberg actually threw out the Deafening Blast and pushed the Gyrocopter outside of the static storm, allowing him to get off the cheese and the BKB. And that's why Loshara actually blinked in, because he was about to blow up the gyrocopter, but immediately he was back into full HP, and Loshara was just like, ah, shit. And that's what forced the buyback. So, yeah. a little bit of a misstep that fight, but again, like, he, the pressure's really on him right now. Cannot get picked off. I'm curious what this Dark Series is going to build next. I'm like, my initial thought is like, Refresher or something. Just double sheep? Yeah, certainly. You know, it's like... I think so. That or I guess double sheep, double BKB, Sh double wall. Shiva's maybe, but I don't know. I think the lockdown for AM is the big, big thing for him. I mean, the AM seems to be the problem. I think BKB's either, invoker is either just you go not a refresher. Problem. Yeah, either refresher or Octarine Core to me seems like by far the best items, just because you have so many active abilities that are going to be affected by both of those uh, throughout your items, throughout your skills. So uh, to me, that would make a ton of sense. For him in this matchup here and there. They got another smoke on this courier. Gonna bring over the Wind Ranger. Gonna bring All over right. the Dexter. And once more, they All gotta right. find this AM. Let's see. They Probably gonna head bot and hope he TPs. Here they go. We'll see. Cookies together. We're on the move. Rolling down this mid lane He's right now. Home. They're in fight mode. There's no chance Roche is up. They gotta know that by timer. They know they wanna take a fight. And as they hustle on through okay, here, Spirit. Like Spirit very, very nervous. Look at this, already burrowed up. Nyx Assassin waits inside the base. This seems to be more of a ward expedition right now for Cookies, if anything. Got that ward, though. Mission accomplished. Let's pack <laughs> it up and go home, boys. Let's go home. Back to farm. Woo! So smart. That was exciting. By the AM. Like, by, like you, you just want to be on the map always, but he sees no one. And he knows they're smoked up, and he knows if he dies, this game's over. So just chill in the base. Like, yeah, you've already farmed up enough gold, man. It's just the lanes that matter at this point. Uh, money is really no object. We'll see. Easy blink steal again. Rubik refreshes his additional bit of mobility, and it is the refresher. Yep, they do favor that double lockdown on this Darkseer, man. Got to give him credit where it's due. He, he always seems to be pulling together lots of farm here, and for the most part, his vacuum walls seem on point. We'll, we'll see what he can get done now with all these tools. This is where you're Trying really... Trying to get Loshara. You're taking the hero to the limit. Top lane, yep. A gift from the he will be able to blink away, though. I mean, this is where you have to have everything. I mean, this... 
Blink in, set up, you know, sheep, vacuum, refresh, rinse, repeat. Connect as much as possible. My like god, afterlife. Oh, swimming up and above here. Static storm. Steph heading up north. Makes it back and away. Fiend's grip not happening. Fiend's grip stolen now. Ash moves in. Call down is there. Pablo looking for a target. If he can get close enough. Remember, he has the Aether Lens to even get a better catch with it. Gims looking to pull them back. Always want to fly. He's going to get shackled up right now. Tornado catches on three. Pushes him back oh, out. Nice combo up with the stun. Oh, barely alive. Gims steps away from that sun strike here. Afterlife TPs under the burrow. He's gone. Vacuum back for always want to fly. And it looks like they'll be able to take down this disruptor support. Big, big fight for two support takedown. It looks like on the team spirit. Runs down. We'll give uh, more of the way for cookies. But not as much to really progress the game as far as objectively. Well, that was definitely the, probably the last place we were expecting a big team fight to occur, honestly. In terms of how this game's been going, so much base defense and everything, getting out a little bit aggressive. And yeah. Blashara actually picking up what we talked about, ditching the Battle Fury. It looks like he's got a Skull Basher in the stash, so obviously the Abyssal, definitely the main item you want to grab yeah. in this situation. And he can ditch the Battle Fury every time in base like this when they need to fight. Yep. Um, and it might be enough for them to win this fight. But, oh, there's not going to be a Static Storm. This is bad. That That is a huge crutch right now, possibly for Spirit. But already that afterlife burrow going to work. What's the response going to be for cookies? And do they fortified. know how to deal with it? They have the gem, so they get a nice sheep on him. Shackle, they force him to the low ground into an awkward situation. Pablo's in, gets the grave help. Ushara, though, waiting with the void. Not looking to commit it quite yet. And Cookie's now looking to go to work on these racks. Tier 3 is down. This Ash Gyrocopter just destructing. The base before them. They're going to get what they need. They're going to quickly look to get out if possible. Afterlife looking for a long-range stun? No, not going to be there. They already head out. Big work done from Cookies. Love the setup right there. They lead in with the vision. They get the sheep. They force the Nyx into that bad situation on the low ground. And Dazzle still has the heads up to catch out with Rubik and save him from the AM. All right, well, two lanes down, one to go. So the Abyssal Blade now out, and does he? Yeah, he has buyback in 40 seconds, but, uh, oh, wait, he just sold it. Okay. Wait, oh, he sold the Battle Fury to get buyback back. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. So we'll still have two lives from Lashara here. Yeah. In 30 seconds from now, making this a little bit scary again. Hmm, 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 hmm. They could head all the way up Where's to that, that top lane. They maybe could look for a catch on him farming just on the side, but as you said, Roche is up. Probably something both teams are looking to consider here. And already on the scene, Spirit. Boots to travel in. They're going to poke in. They're going to see here. And they're going to go to work. Cookies are already nearby, though. And this is hard. You got a Darks here on the other team? You better get it quick. I don't know. We'll see. She power shot in there and it was like, oh, there's no one there. It's fine. Yeah, the, now they're pinging the like, oh, timing window's there, gone. They're not going to go for There's the power shot. He's going to go now. Oh, it's too late. He's going to go for it anyways. Oh, oh, no. Pablo goes in and just gets killed. I thought that was the darks here at first. Good thing. That's a lie. No buyback, though, for Pablo. I mean, they still have their darks here. They this still have it? their call down. I think they still have a respectable high ground defense here. We'll see, though, if Spirit really feel like with the Rubik being out, this is their best chance. I mean, it does make life a lot easier for these supports to get everything off without at risk of losing it. We'll see if they can do oh. it. They've got the bots, too, here on the AM. Yep. And his heart of Trask patiently waiting on Goblack when he loses the Aegis. And, I mean, trying to kill him twice, maybe even... Now, the only thing is he's going to have to TP in for this fight. So that means he won't be able to TP back in after a buyback. So it's only going to have to be oh. two kills here. Or rather, one kill. Yeah, two kills, I should say. So. We'll have to see how this sieging afterlife Nyx Assassin with Ags works. For now, Burrow's on the outside. Dyer's Tier 3 easily taken apart. Lashar starting to go to work. Going to get cheaped up right away. There's a big vacuum. There's the wall. Now, does he have the refresher set up here? He has the refresher. Does he have the mana to support maybe another big combo if necessary? Lashar to go into work. There's the second vacuum in the second wall right now. We got geometry on the field. Oh, man. A full wipe right now. AM, the lone survivor with a second life, makes it down the low ground, but they found the catch with him. He gets the Abyssal off, but they're going to take him apart. That is a full team wipe. Buyback is needed already just to get it on cooldown. 
Same with the Invoker. What a hold from Cookies. That refresher Darkseer play. You don't get to see those every day. Yeah, but now there's no Battle Fury. And so Shara, two waves coming out of Super Creep. His boots also not currently available. And he's going to have some issues there. Actually, of course, still sitting on the Bane. So he just kind of waddles around right now. And look how little push he has right now. Man, oh man. That just opened the game wide open for cookies. Quickly, look at the net worth, man. He just dropped down. Get ready to repel. It's 20k plus for them. And, uh, well, we'll see. Now we question the high ground of Team Spirit. Fiend's Grip ready to go. Burrow shenanigans, I suppose, here for Loshara. He will have Void up in about five seconds time. They smoke and prepare. Are they looking to make an engagement happen outside the base? They're jetting forward like they think it's going to happen. But cookies are already on the way out. <laughs> Checking in Roche. That was already done. Sorry, fellas. We're going to head out the other way. <laughs> Pablo's like, oh, yeah, right. That's where I died. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe I want to find some good items in there. You know, a little treasure trove or something like that. But They're also but going why, in there. Why are they going in Roche? Everybody, What's happening? Am I missing something? Aegis <laughs> was not done. Loshar is stuck on the high ground now. What the hell's happening here? Gibbs oh, jumps in. Shackle not enough. There's another vacuum wall. This stack storm will go off, though. And Loshara gets the abyssal onto Ash, realizes this is not their fight, and he goes into retreat mode after life. We'll try to make it away under his burrow, but that is not happening here already. Long commitments as they try to get a hold of Iceberg. This could be it. He has no buyback now. And meanwhile, Darks here going to get that finish on the Knicks. And they call game. That is it. Cookies. Pulled out an upset here. They take out Team Spirit in this best of three. Wow. All right, so that's it. I mean, that's elimination. Uh, congratulations to Cookies. Like, these are the guys who are tweeting out, like, first game against a real team. So, huge. I mean, that's awesome for them. Uh, I hope they are going to get quite a few fans here. I don't think Team Spirit played, you know, poorly at all, honestly. Uh, we, they took it to the end, an hour and six minutes. Uh, I liked everything I saw from the side of Cookies, though. I... Mm -hmm. MVP for me, I, I think this game, Kezu, like, played out of his mind on that Darkseer. He really did. And I know you were hyping up a bit from what you saw, and people were all saying this guy is a top-notch offlaner from Heroes of New Earth. And I got to say, it's been an impressive first day from what I've seen from him. I mean, it's probably not his first day, but from what I've seen, man. The first game, the lone druid play, and his Darkseer always seemed to have the farm. And he itemized appropriately. I mean, that advice could have been given from his team or himself. Cookies, I'm a fan. In this tournament, I'm a fan, and I look forward to seeing what they're going to be doing moving on forward. This could be heartbreaking, though, for a team like Team Spirit. Always want to fly. Goblack, these are established players and already taken out in the BTS Europe Cup. That is something crazy. Well, we're not done yet. We got another best of three coming up for you. Stick around as soon to come is going to be Danish Bears going against no logic so we'll cut out to a fine break i'm carlo guy join me remotely you can follow him and support him it's mop packs at mop packs we'll see you soon folks after a short break